Hi, welcome to another section of our WinUAE installation guide. In this part we will be taking a look at ADFs and we will need two blank 720k floppy disks formatted to a PC format for this experiment. And so let's just imagine that we've trolled through PC internet archives and we've found ADFs aplenty on the internet. How is it possible to transfer those ADFs from the internet onto a disk and to use them on our native Amiga? Well, first of all, I'm going to use uh, an ADF from the game's archives and I'm going to click on the disk to download that. Here it is, it's Star Wars and it's 264K, which is a zipped archive. You'll notice all the other ADFs in the archive are all 900K. So first of all, I'm going to extract that zip and for this I'm going to use WinRAR. You can use WinZip or any kind of unzipping Windows utility for this. So now that we have our ADF unzipped, I'm going to rename that archive to StarWars.ADF and it is important to remember to do that as we shall see later on. If you forget to do that, then you will have to rename uh, the archive manually and so we will select the best compression so we are going to re-zip this archive uh, in zip format and there we go starwars.zip and it's a small file again compared to the others but we shall need it that small so we can copy that file onto the first of our blank PC formatted 720k discs as we saw in part one it's easy to format those discs and if you go to part zero of this um, WinUAE installation guide in part zero I explain how to format those uh, 720k discs on a modern PC so there we go Star Wars zip is now archived so to use that zip on an Amiga I will need a number of utilities the first one and the most important one it has to be said it's called Trans ADF, so let's just search for that in the Aminet archives and download that package. I'll also download the Trans ADF GUI file, graphic user interface, which is important if you want to run that thing from an icon. And we'll also need some way to extract our archives, so let's type lha.run and that is a self-extracting archive which allows us to extract LHA files and we'll also need zip as well or rather unzip to unzip the zip Star Wars file that we've just made so there it is unzip version 5.40 let's just grab that and now that we have all those files in our downloads directory we can drag and drop all those onto our second blank 720k PC formatted disk and drop those into the A drive and that will take just a little while to copy I'm using two discs for this experiment basically because you can not always rely on the main zipped ADF to fit on one disc along with all four of these utilities so now those files are on the disc and there they are all we need to do is to boot up our Amiga so this is what our current Amiga looks like and I'm going to activate CrossDOS for this. CrossDOS was available in Workbench 2.1 I think onwards, certainly available in 3.0 and 3.1 onwards so running that DOS driver will activate the PCO drive and then we put our disk in and it recognizes it as a, a DOS compatible disk and we can't see any files on there, so let's show all and all four of our tools, all our utilities are on there. So the next section is to extract all those tools and to get those onto our Amiga. So for this I'm going to use the RAM directory uh, because I have plenty of RAM in this computer, but I'd certainly recommend making a directory on a hard disk or on a some kind of hard drive installation for this so I'm going to copy all the files from PCO 
onto our destination, which is again the RAM drive, uh, a temporary directory in the RAM disk. And those will take a while to copy. So let's speed that up just a little bit. That's a good thing about editing, you can speed up the footage. And now that those things are on there, let's just check the memory. Yes, plenty of memory left to use our Amiga. So let's check out that RAM disk, DIR. Let's get those listed out and they'll be in the temp directory in this case. So let's check that out, there they are. So the first thing I need to do is to run the LHA run self-extractable archive and that will extract uh, a fairly latest version of LHA to uh, RAM in this case and just doing a DIR there it is and I'm actually going to rename the main LHA 68k package to LHA just to make that easier to run and so doing a DIR there it is LHA the next step is to use our newly extracted LHA to unarchive the zip the unzip package and LHA e unzip will do that for us pretty speedily and once again those will extract to our destination drive which happens to be the RAM disk in this case let's just uh, have a look at that and there it is so let's type LHA e again and extract the uh, trans ADF LHA with the main trans ADF package and that will be dumped in the same place in the RAM disk and finally while we're here let's extract the GUI the graphic user interface for trans ADF and we shall certainly make use of that in a moment and that will extract to the same place So let's DIR, check those out. All four packages are now in that directory with LHA in the root and the rest in their own directories. So to make it easier on me, because I have Workbench installed, the easiest thing is probably to copy the LHA and all our tools to the C drive, which should be path. If you've installed Workbench properly, that will be in our DOS path. So let's go into the unzip directory and copy unzip to C as well. And then that should allow us to fast access that, no problem. And while we're here, let's go into trans ADF. And once again, copy trans ADF, the main file to C. And that will save us time later on. And now we're here. Uh, we have the trans ADF to see we can also copy the trans ADF to the GUI directory and that will help the GUI function so let's just copy that into our previous GUI directory and then when we go into that directory that should there be a fully formed fully active trans ADF package which we can then copy that directory to our hard drive as is and that will run as is and we can also run that directly from the RAM disk as well there you go clicking on the icons runs the graphic user interface and double clicking on that will launch the program so let's do that and let's take a look at trans ADF so trans ADF may look pretty basic on the surface but using this very simple tool it's possible to read an ADF from a disk and also to write a disk to an ADF. So for this, first of all, we need to find our Star Wars ADF and to get that somewhere near our computer so that Trans ADF can then read that and hopefully we'll be able to transfer the ADF to a disk and play that on our Amiga. I'm just cleaning up the environment here for a little housekeeping and then let's insert the first disc again, the first blank 720 and on here there should be the Star Wars zip that we just made and so all we need to do is to copy that zip onto our Amiga somehow and for this I'm going to use the Amiga utility there uh, version 2 and that appears on our boot disc if you decide to use the boot disc 
from parts one and two, then you will have access to this. Otherwise, you can use directory opus or the can line interface. And I'm just going to copy that into the T directory on drive DHO. And that will take some while to copy it from the disk. You can see I'm pressing all the copy functions there, but it is copying. It just takes some while to do that. So now that we have our Star Wars zip in T on our hard drive, we can then get rid of that, close that, and we can now use our unzip utility to unzip the archive and to transform that back from a zip into an ADF. So to do that, I'm going to use CLI, the Amiga shell, the Amiga DOS once again, and I'm going to unzip the Star Wars zip in the uh, DHLT, that's if I remember to put a line before the U and that makes it unzip, so there you go, a line is important and if for whatever reason we didn't rename the ADF, you can see the Star Wars has its full path name there, um, if you didn't rename the ADF that's what it will look like and it will take some time to inflate, there it is. So let's do a quick DIR to take a look at that and as you can see it's the long path name and it's so long it hasn't even fitted in that list window there but that's the file and if you list that out there it's still only barely fitting in the window but you can see it's a full uh, 901k full ADF file. So now we have that extracted. Um, unfortunately, if you use your long file names there, uh, long file names are usually incompatible with TransADF. So if we use the package and we try to load the file from DHLT, you should find absolutely nothing because the file name is just too long for TransADF to recognize. Hence, renaming the ADF before we zip the file in the first place. So that's what happens if you don't do that. So to get around that fact, um, there is absolutely no way to list that file any other way. You must rename the file back to a short file name. So let's do that. And doing that through the CLI is often a pain and doesn't always work. And directory opus doesn't always work either because the file name is often so long that it breaks out of the rename function of directory opus but this Amiga util 2 does work and we can use that pretty effectively to rename that back to the Star Wars ADF the file name that we should have renamed it to in the first place and having done so let's just bring up this requester again check out the T drive and there it is the file name is now listed so we can then OK that and bring up the TransADF tools so we can see that in the foreground by clicking on device DFO and choosing our Star Wars ADF. All we need to do is click to disk and that will transfer the Star Wars ADF to DFO and no matter whether that blank is formatted or not, uh, a normal blank Amiga disk will then be reformatted with the tracks present in this ADF and so it will overwrite any disk so you don't really need to format the disk you just have to insert the thing and TransADF will take care of the rest and I have speeded this footage up just a little bit because doing this takes its time but once that process has been completed the ADF will be on the disk and you can then basically reset the machine and insert the disk and hopefully given a bit of luck the machine will boot the disk will boot and in this case it looks like this let's just speed up that loading process and make sure that works and it appears to be doing so and so let's speed this up again and Make sure that this game actually boots. This was downloaded oh, off the internet. Don't forget, we've just downloaded this off a PC archive on the internet. And it works perfectly 
transfer it back onto our Amiga. Let's just get rid of you, Darth, and continue with that. You can see it works without any graphics glitches or playability problems whatsoever. So let's just take a look at the second aspect. Imagine if you want to uh, bring an Amiga disc from your Amiga and you want to transfer that to a PC. And having inserted the original Workbench 3.1 Disk 1, uh, we can now use our packages and you might be able to notice the Trans ADF has been dragged across to a tools directory on a hard drive and that works just the same um, it's the exact same installation that we dragged over from the RAM so in this case we need to use device DFO because that's the disk drive which the disk is in and I'm going to make a file name and copy the uh, image from DFO to a file so to do that we can specify a file name and for this we'll just give this a simple file name uh, workbench31.adf seems to be easy enough and then all we have to do is click to file and that should make an ADF image of that disk and insert that into DHLT with the label wb31.adf and again let's just speed up that process the disk is now reading and it's writing the ADF into the T directory let's just use the multitasking features to clear that up and the trans ADF has just reported that that disk seems to have worked the ADF has put itself on the disk so there it is and it's the exact file size 901120 and that's the file size every ADF should be and now we will zip that file up uh, this case remembering not to put an arrow before the A because that will not work so the zip package there has mixed opinions on how it likes its um, attributes but in this case it's without the line and that will then label that ADF with any file name that you type in in this case I typed A so it's called it A.zip so let's just rename that to something a little more sensible so that we can see uh, what that file name really is it's the workbench 3.1 and so doing a quick dir that's what we need and that zip is now half the size of the original archive and because that is less than 720k that will now fit on a disc and you might be able to notice the zip hasn't crunched it down as much as it would have done on the star wars zip and zips do uh, compress discs with a random um, outcome so some discs will compress better than others but now that we have that workbench 3.1 ADF in a zip we can then copy that to our blank floppy disk and there it is on our PC we'll just drag that into downloads so we can see that and there it is so the next step now that we have our zip is to extract that the quick and easy way on our PC instant ADF there it is and then we can simply um, drag that across and put that in our ADFs directory um, in our emulation archive for Win UAE and I'm just going to rename that at this point giving that the long file name again so that, that is more easily recognizable on our PC and so that's the very first Amiga Workbench disk copied from a disk through zip and into ADF format um, on our PC so again let's just copy that into the ADF's directory and then boot up win UAE using the configuration that we configured in part 0 of this installation guide and give it a nice meaty CPU and under the floppy drives we can then select the um, ADF that we've just copied there's the Star Wars and so there it is workbench 310 and with a bit of luck the Amiga disk that we copied from our Amiga onto the PC should now boot as is and we can then use that disk 
our original copy of Workbench from our original Workbench discs and we can use those to install Workbench on a hard drive and as you can see that works absolutely no problem and that's certainly how you copy uh, Amiga discs certainly DOS compatible discs although some cracks will work uh, and reverse that mechanic so you can get some uh, easily crack games to ADF and to work on the PC but these are all my workbench discs renamed to nice file name and we shall use all of those to install workbench on our hard drives so thanks for watching this ADF guide see you again